Welcome back on your Tuesday morning. Let's check out the clock. Time is ticking down for the total solar eclipse. Six days, six hours, 47 minutes away. This event is especially rare and one that, uh, for one, that reaches totality over parts of our region. And that's why scientists are excited for research opportunities from the eclipse on both a local and national scale. KSAT meteorologist Mia Montgomery gives us a sneak peek into what some of the research looks like here in San Antonio. This is so cool, Billy Grinder Physics Lab. From the lab to the outdoors and even to outer space, researchers across the nation and right here in the Alamo City are using the total eclipse as a rare opportunity to conduct research. No matter what part of the astrofield you're in, it's a big a conglomerate, a big gathering of the science community. Finest Stribling is a research assistant at UTSA who is currently studying the life cycle of a star in Stardust. His studies use light from the sun on a day-to-day -day basis to figure out what's happening within those stars. And it's just one example of the many research opportunities the Stardust group at UTSA is conducting during the eclipse. They're doing a lot of uh, things with insects and how insects interact. And we're doing a lot of things for the uh, the visually impaired community and how we're using like, textiles so they can feel what's going on even though they can't see and things like that. Across town at the San Antonio Zoo, zookeepers and researchers like Dr. Charles Ritzler will be keeping a close eye on how certain animal species respond to the eclipse. Because so little is known about how animals react to eclipses housed here in zoos. Ritzler says there was one previous study done during the 2017 solar eclipse when the path of totality crossed over the Riverbank Zoo in Columbia, South Carolina. Their findings? That animals started to prepare for their end of day activities. Gorillas were seen walking closer to their sort of indoor keeper areas. Elephants were seen getting less active. So that was our, our hypothesis here at the zoo. This is the home home of the flamingos. Around 1.30 p.m. on April 8th, zookeepers and researchers like Charles are going to be monitoring their behavior to see if they respond to the dimming sky. And while that's just a taste of the research being conducted locally, the opportunities continue in an even bigger way on a national scale. Enter NASA. So back in 2017, the sun was in a solar minimum, so it was not as active. But right now we're in a solar maximum. That solar maximum is one of the reasons why this year's total eclipse is different from the one seven years ago. NASA chose a handful of experiments to conduct during this year's eclipse, from getting clearer pictures of the sun's corona to figuring out if radio or GPS signals could be affected. Their findings may be used in future NASA missions and space exploration. And with the next total eclipse not taking place until 2044 in the United States, it's a rare opportunity that connects researchers from all over the nation to those right here in San Antonio. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News.